Good evening. Welcome to the Granite State Baptist Church evening devotion here on this Tuesday night. We are doing a recording for this evening, so unfortunately it is not live. Just because of some of the things that are going on around the church here tonight. And so, if you have your Bibles, we're going to go over to the book of Luke, chapter number 19. Luke chapter number 19, we'll start reading down there in verse number 35. The Bible says this, And they brought him to Jesus, speaking of the cult that Jesus had told his disciples to go get here in the previous verses. And it says, And they cast their garments upon the colt, and they set Jesus thereon. And as he went, they spread their clothes in the way. And when he was come nigh, even now at the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works that they had seen, saying, Blessed be the King that cometh in the name of the Lord, peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And some of the Pharisees among the multitude said unto him, Master, Rebuke thy disciples. And he answered and said unto them, I tell you that if these should hold their peace, the stones would immediately cry out. We're just going to take a few moments here this evening and speak on the subject of it's time to cry out. It's time to cry out. Let's have a word of prayer and then we'll jump right into the devotion here tonight. Heavenly Father, thank you for the day. Lord, I thank you for who you are. I thank you for my salvation. Lord, I thank you for those who are watching this uh, video here tonight. I pray that you would be with us as we go through this devotion. pray that you would challenge us here. In your precious Son, Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. So, here in the text we see, we see that Jesus is coming into town. We, we've already come through. Um, in the past few weeks, we've gone, gone through Palm Sunday, and then we've come into Easter Sunday as well. And so we're familiar with this portion of Scripture where the Bible is talking about Jesus' triumphal entry. Okay, And so Jesus looks at his disciples, tells them to go get the colt for him to ride into town on. And the Bible says here that when he was, and when he was nigh, even out at the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works that they had seen. Okay, And so here what we're looking at tonight is a, a it is time for us to cry out. So what and what are we crying out about? Well, number one, what I'd like for us to remember what we're crying out about is there's a message worth telling. The Bible says here in Luke 19, verse number 38, this was the message that they were crying out. They said this in verse 38, saying, Blessed be the king that cometh in the name of the Lord, peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Okay, They were crying out and saying, Blessed be the king that cometh in the name of the Lord. Can I challenge us here? There are many messages that are worth crying out about. I think about the fact that yesterday we had the solar eclipse going on here in New Hampshire. And I think about so many that drove up to see it in totality with 100% coverage. I know here in Concord we had 97% coverage. And so you think about the messages that were being proclaimed during the, uh, that time of saying, hey, make sure you don't look at it without the special glasses. And then there were some that were even saying, hey, don't even look at it with the glasses. Let NASA take the photo and then you look at it later. OK, so many of these messages going out. OK, there's a message that is worth telling to the world that is around us. And that is the message of blessed be the king. OK. Let's and uh, this is a challenge for us of saying, hey, we are coming through the Easter season. We're coming into a, a time in our nation where everybody is asking questions about what could be coming. I think about so many questions were being asked over this weekend about the eclipse that was happening and what that meant when it comes to the Bible. And and you you 
have such an opportunity to tell people about Jesus and tell them that Jesus died for them. Okay, making sure that, hey, we remember that there is a message worth telling. Why? Because you get down here to the bottom of it and Jesus answering the Pharisees in verse number 40, he says, I tell you that if these should hold their peace, the stones would immediately cry out. Okay, you imagine this, that we have a message so important that if we were to be silent about it, God, God has the power that he could even make the stones cry out with this message. And so you uh, you imagine the power of the message that we have to be able to go to a world that is lost and dying and to proclaim hope for the hopeless. Why? Because of the king that we have to be able to proclaim about. Okay? There's a message worth telling. Okay? But then number 2 what I want us to realize here tonight is that there is a method worth using. You say brother Peter, what's the method? That they were using verse number 37. We see this. It says the whole multitude of the disciples re began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice with a loud voice. OK, they and the Bible says here that they, and they were proclaiming this message with a loud voice. OK, when was the last time that we were loud about our joy for Christ? When were the, we were uh, when was the last time we were loud about saying, hey, this is what Jesus did for me. When was the last time we were allowed about saying, hey, this world needs Jesus, and I'm going to take the gospel out and tell somebody about it today. Okay, There's nothing wrong with going to a world that is lost and dying and telling them about Jesus and about God and being, for lack of a better term, loud about it. Okay, Do you realize that in contrast to being silent about it, even a whisper in a completely silent room is loud because you step, you step back and you go any amount of noise coming out is, is louder than what it was. Okay, And you look at the disciples here. The Bible says here that the multitude of disciples began to rejoice and praise God. Okay, They weren't afraid of it. Okay, We ought not be afraid of looking at a world that is lost and dying and saying, hey, Blessed be our our God and being able to look at them and saying, how great is our God and, and telling them about Jesus who came to this earth to die on an old rugged cross for the sins of mankind. Why? Because we couldn't die for ourselves. We couldn't offer atonement for ourselves. And without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sins. And God came down to this earth himself to say, hey, I'm going to die for you. Okay? There was no shame in the, in the disciples crying out. They, they, and they were proud about the fact that they were happy and they were rejoicing that and their God was coming in. Okay, When was the last time? And I know we could probably look back and say, well, Brother Peter, it was just a couple Sundays ago because it was Easter. Hey, it ought to be today. We ought to be able to say, hey, Brother Peter, I went out and I, w I was able to talk to somebody today about Jesus and saying, hey, I know that we have limited inter in in interaction with people on a day-to-day -day basis. There are some people I know that they won't see somebody out in the world today. But then there are others that I know that they'll, they'll talk to at least, they'll talk to dozens of people today. Okay, make it a point to be loud about God. Okay, don't be silent about what he's done in your life. Why? Because it's a miracle. That's where we get into the third part here is that there's a miracle worth living. Okay, there's nothing wrong with stepping back and saying, hey, here's the message. Here's the method of how we're doing it. But can I tell you the miracle in it all is that we're living. We are a changed life for God. And we have the ability to step back and say, hey, how great is my God? My God is so great that he changed my life and I get to serve him. There is nothing wrong with living a right life for God. Nothing wrong with it. Okay, I think about the Clark family. They sing a song. It's entitled, I've Missed Out. And what it talks about is it, it says, I've missed out on the heartbreak of living my life in sin. Can I challenge us that, hey, 
a changed life, yeah, we're going to miss out. But, hey, we're going to miss out on some things that, hey, it's a good thing we're missing out on it because those things can wreck us. And there's nothing wrong with living right for God. Why? Because it's a miracle when we get to step up and say, hey, God changed my life. Why is it a miracle? Because it's something we couldn't do. It's something we couldn't do. Think about that verse. It's one of my favorite verses. You hear, you hear me quote it all the time. Okay, But God commendeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Okay, Why? Because he wanted to have a relationship with us. He wanted to have uh, uh, that, that ability for us to live with him for all of eternity. And he said, I'm going to die so that you can have that opportunity. Okay, and, that, and that's what we're looking at here tonight. I think about on Easter how we sang, and the choir got up and we sang the value of one. And can, and can you imagine up in heaven the joy there'll be that day as a sinner bows his head to pray? Can't you hear the Father say, go sound the horn, strike up the choir. A sinner is saved, saved from the fire. No more in darkness. He's received my son. All heaven rejoices. That's the value of one. Okay? There's a miracle that is worth living. And hey, that's why we can go back and say, hey, there's a method that we can use. It's, hey, we got to get out. We've got to tell somebody about Jesus today. Why? Because of the message. This is what Jesus did. I think about if we were to go back, and I'll close with this. If we were to go back and look at ad campaigns, okay, there's a message in an ad campaign. Okay, well, then there's a method for them getting it out. Okay, you sit here and say, okay, well, here's, here's my ad that I want to put out to the world. Okay, well, how are we going to put it out there? Are we going to go door knock? Are we going to put it in the newspaper? Are we going to put it on Concord Patch? Are we going to email it out? How are we going to do it? There's a method. But then the miracle is when we get responses back from it. Okay? Here's where we're at today. There's a message worth telling. Jesus died, was buried, and rose again on the third day to put an end to death for all of eternity if we would accept his son, the gift of salvation. Then the method, hey, how are we, uh, we going to get this out there? We got to tell people got to be loud about it get out there and say hey jesus died for you and then the miracle in it all we're living it we're living it we get to stand up today and say hey god changed my life friends that's why it's time to cry out it's time to cry out time to do it Okay, that's our devotion here tonight. That's our challenge. I appreciate you taking the time to watch this. We're going to pray, and then we'll end the, uh, end the video here tonight. Thank you so much for, uh, for joining us. And remember, cry out today. Cry out tomorrow. Cry out the next day. Why? Because Jesus is willing to save whosoever will. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for the day. Lord, I thank you so much for who you are. I thank you for my salvation. Lord, I pray that you would help us to remember the message that is worth telling to a world that is lost and dying. Lord, that you've come to save. Lord, I pray that you would help us to be loud for you. I pray that you would help us to tell somebody about you today. Lord, and I pray that you would help us to remember the fact that we ourselves are the miracle. Lord, why? Because you've changed our lives. Lord, we get to be the living miracle of saying, hey, I would not be where I am today, Lord, without you. Lord, I thank you so much for our church family. I pray that you would give us a wonderful rest of the week. I pray you'd be with us as we, as we come together on Thursday. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us here tonight, and we'll see you guys on Thursday.